Hi, and welcome to The Dish on Divorce. I'm Jennifer Barkin. And I'm Leanne Townsend. And today, my guest, our guest, is Paula Seligman. And I've known Paula for a very long time, since we were younger. And Paula's life has gone through a lot. A lot has gone on. Paula was the first single mom that I knew. She divorced before anyone else did with a young family. Um, She remarried, had more children, has had a couple of careers. But today, I want Paula to be an inspiration for you, our listeners, by letting you know that there is hope after divorce. So, Paula, if it's okay and you're happy to share, willing to share, I'd like, if you're okay with us asking you about what it was like, what it was like being a young mom with two little kids and really not having that supportive community back then. Well, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. And I feel like, you know, I've gone through many hoops. And uh, yes, I was divorced at a very young age, trailblazer. Um, And it was difficult. I mean, it was difficult because my vision uh, was about family and about creating this intact, you know, family and having a beautiful life. And, uh, and one thing I never lost sight of is that that is my that was my goal. And that was going to continue to be my goal through my journey. So the young kids, it was one thing, and then falling into a perspective into a, you know, redefining who I was, was was a whole other part of my divorce, which was the biggest part of, um, of that of my divorce. One of the things that, you know, I know I've found hard in my own divorce, and I would think that given that you were, you know, younger, I was like 40 when when my marriage um, failed, was dealing with um, the, like the loss of the fairy tale. You know, we get married thinking that we're going to have this fairy tale and live happily ever after. And there, you know, I think it's changing in terms of there being a stigma with divorce, but there still is a little bit. And I, I hated the idea of being like a divorcee. And I'm wondering um, if you struggled with that at all and, and how that was for you. So that's, it's so funny because I do, I talk about my fairy tale wedding, but then I talk about my fairy tale divorce because the, the, the whole idea, the whole divorce had crumbled, fallen to the, you know, to the ground um nothing could have been nothing we were t- two different people but the putting back together was my fairy tale in terms of grasping again that vision of that intact family and wanting a family and wanting to be married was what kept me you know alive kept me going kept me you know showing up and that truth was was always there um and i i got together with people um that were going through similar situations as me and my support group was incredible it was like it was it was what got me through but um yes falling into that pit I I call it like um uh what's her name with the with the rabbit uh what's help me out ladies where she falls down in the pit oh Alice in Wonderland Alice in Wonderland Alice in Wonderland I fell into a very dark hole and that was you know, that was a moment of truth where I had to really look at what was around me and who I was going to be and, and gain that identity and gain myself and my values again. So climbing out of that hole was my journey. And that was, that was, that was the hard part for me was that climb. That was, how was I going to start? Where was I going to go? What was I going to, what will people think? And again, this bubble was burst on my lap and, uh, putting those pieces back together was, uh, was my climb. You were 29 when your marriage ended, when your first marriage ended? 28. 29, 28? 28, yes. So how did you find a support group back then? Because back then people didn't, I mean, now you can go on social media and there's all these groups for single moms. Uh, you know, there's a couple, not as much for single dads, but 
I also got divorced young, not as young as you. Um, and there was nothing. And everybody I knew was married or they hadn't married, so they didn't come with the ready-made family. Like, I just found that I was an outsider and felt different. And I didn't find much support. I was invited out by people. Oh, do you want to have lunch on Tuesday? But Saturday night, I was home with young kids. Yeah, no, it was. It was not. It, it wasn't. I, I found people that were older were helping me out. I had a really good therapist. I had great friends. I had family, and I I was not afraid to ask for help anywhere. I'd ask the grocery store lady. I'd ask anybody anywhere I could get help. And um and so in terms of people going through at my age, no, I didn't find a lot of people. I found people older. And I went back to the past. I went back to people. I was, you know, calling up people from the past just to get the dialogue going. I needed to talk about it. I needed to get gain, you know, experience just from, you know, other people's stories or just being heard really was something that helped me. So, um, yeah, no, it was, it was, it was tough, but I found it. And I, and I'm grateful for the people that I found. I'll never forget that support. So important. It is so important. It's, you know, we can't underestimate, you know, the, the importance of having that support. And, you know, it's interesting, you know, what Jennifer was just saying, even though I was like 40, so much older when I, when my marriage ended, but one of the things I found hard too, and I would think this would be even worse when you're younger, I don't know, is if I went to like a neighbor, cause I lived in a neighborhood where I was the only divorced woman. Everyone else was an intact family. And so if there was like a, a neighborhood party, um, you know, and I would, I, cause I always vowed, I wasn't going to let the fact that I was on my own stop me from going to a party, even though I felt uncomfortable walking in by myself, I made myself do it. And so I would go and I lived in a community where, you know, I always call it like the Stepford wife community. Like a lot of the, the moms were stay at home moms and I was working and you know, I can remember if I was talking to some of the husbands and who I in some ways had more in common with because I was out in the work world and, you know, I would see the wife come swooping in as if I was somehow, you know, making a move on the husband or hitting on the husband, which was not what I was doing at all. And so I'm wondering whether, you know, because you were even younger, like whether you experienced anything like that because you were divorced and around your, you know, married friends. Well, in terms of, you know, dating and going out there, um, my whole thing was like, what are people going to think? And I am young and, but I had such an incredible perspective change and a shift that actually set me up for success in terms of just me as my identity. And that was that I had my whole life ahead of me. I was 28 years old. And I remember my lawyer said to me, you know, what are you going to do with your life now? You're 28 years old. You're not, you know, going to sit home and raise your children. You're going to get out there and have a career. What are you going to do? And I said, you know, you're right. I have a whole life ahead of me. I'm going to meet people. I'm going to go out there. And I think just me getting my confidence together and going back out to that, the dating world, you know, we didn't have online dating that we had to really go and meet people in person. And, uh, and yeah, a lot of my friends hadn't even been married the first time. So um, for a while, it was very exciting because I was out there, you know, doing it again. And, um, and the other part was just, it was very nerve wracking, very scary. But again, the bigger picture for me, the bigger goal was to get married. I wanted a family. I wanted more of a family and I never lost sight. And if we couldn't do it together, I was damn well going to do it myself, my own, you know, my own way. And eventually I got him to be part of my bigger plan. I made him really belong into our lives. We really learned how to collaborate this, uh, this journey, which was a blessing. So how does that work when you're bringing young children from one relationship into the new relationship, now having subsequent more kids, right? So you're building, building your family. Discipline, because you're the parent of all the children. He's the biological parent of a couple of the children. 
Does that make things hard? Do people have to have boundaries, rules? Because there's still another parent who's alive who doesn't live with you all, right? I would think that's challenging. Yeah, so it, so it was really challenging. I mean, the, the thing was, is that once I got myself together and I say, you know, try your best, show up and, and you know, be, you know, try to find what you want in your life. And once I got myself together, I didn't have to be right. I just had to be all right. And I had to be good enough that, um, that I was a good role model and that my kids could see me rise up and dare to be courageous. And so what worked for me was getting my ex to be part of my plan and to have a collaborative approach so that we could be amicable and that we could raise these kids apart. And when I met my new husband, the, when you say boundaries, he was my new boyfriend. He had met my children, but he was their friend. He didn't have to parent them. He didn't have to you know, discipline them in any way. They had a father and blending this, this, you know, this grouping together was, was something that I'm so proud of because there was so much dialogue. We all knew our parts. We all knew where we had to be. And, um, and again, that bigger picture of having that, that family intact, whatever it looked like, it didn't have to be the perfect family intact, but it was going to be a family. So we're going to act like a family and everybody had their role. So, um, you know, there were challenges, but everybody really, um, you know, defined who they were going to be in, in the role of, of the family. So, you know. I it, think we all grew up watching, or at least the Brady Bunch. And leave it to Beaver. <laughs> um, and, yeah. um, and, you know, the Brady Bunch was like the perfect example of a blended family and everything, everyone was happy and it was perfect and um, you know, I'm, I suspect that there's, it's a little more challenging than the Brady Bunch made it out to be. It was, yes, for sure. Because you had these young kids that, you know, once I got married again and I had these kids, they started to grow up and they started to have moods and they had, a, you know, mouths on them and they would say things to my current husband. He would be very offended. He'd be like, oh, your son just said this to me. And I said, I know, I know it's going to take time and you can say your piece. It's not going to be perfect. You know, he was so, he would be so offended. He would, he would say, they don't like me, or, you know, they're not, you know, they, they're not taking to me or whatever it was. But again, we had to all sort of evolve into what this family was going to look like and trial and error. We all, you know, we were all there for the same reasons. So our grounding was great. It's just a matter of, you know, trial and error, what works, what doesn't work. And then when we had the two new kids, funny story, um, I wanted it to be so all like harmonious and blended and I wanted everybody to feel like they were all belonging. And my second husband, our first kid from my second husband at age nine, he said, how come we don't have the same last name as, you know, my brothers from the first marriage? I said, cause you have different dads. And he said, but I want to change my name. I want it to all feel like we are a family. Mm -hmm. So he said, so go ahead, change your name. So they all go no. by my ex-husband's last name. Oh, wow. That, that's really interesting. Which really means that your husband now is just really secure. Um, he has to be. Because for a lot of men, and being in the, this divorce business and writing all of these agreements, and often some people are like, and the child's name shall not change. That's always a big one. Yeah. Right? So... Sounds like you're married to a very understanding, great man. Very, very grounded, very, um, yeah, very secure, like you said. And got us, you know, the, you have to have a sense of humor in all of it, especially because when everybody's healthy and you all want the same thing for the kids and everybody, there's so much love for these children. I looked at it as a blessing. I mean, look at all the people that love them. And again, like creating that dream, like I never lost sight of what that was going to look like. It didn't matter, you know, times of my life and, you know, down and out. I wanted that dream. And that dream came, you know, came to, to reality when, when you change your behavior and you change, you know, you let people into your life. Like I embraced um, my divorce and I embraced my ex-husband and I let him into our lives. The door was always, always open. That's when, you know, um, 
is the sense of humor comes in. You have to laugh. You have to say, listen, like here's a kid at nine years old that is so intuitive that he wants the, you know, he wants people to believe that these brothers are his own brothers. He doesn't want to have the dialogue and explain to him what they aren't. So um, we all laugh about it. Again, um, your current husband for sure is very secure and very strong and not threatened because what you see when blending a family, a lot of time the conflict comes from, well, it has to be the new partner welcoming the ex into your home at your Christmas dinner or whatever holiday you celebrate, right? Saying, but that's the ex-husband. A lot of men would find that threatening. Yeah. Or women, reverse. Like, think of women. So your ex-wife is coming to our holiday table. But I think it's amazing that your family, that all of you work together to be so child-focused. Well, that's it. And it's like, yeah, you know. Kudos to you. you know, yeah. And kudos to all of us because we, like we did, we worked as a team. It's like a business, right? We worked as a team. But again, those kids were never, ever used as pawns, as, as um, you know, they were never the center of anybody's anxiety. Like they, they were protected. And, um, and we were all, like, we all just were ourselves. You know, we just all found the common denominator in all of this. So, um, so yeah, it works. And uh, listen. He's a part of our lives. We, I always say I have two husbands, but I don't, but I say it. <laughs> is he remarried I'm, or is he still on his own? He's still on his own. And so, and I'm assuming that he didn't have any other children um, or anything. No, no. No, he's been engaged a few times. Yeah. And, and how have, like, when he's had a woman in his life, I'm curious, how has that been as smooth as, you know, everything with all of you? Or has there ever been a situation? Because I, and I hate to say this as a woman, but I find it sometimes it's those, you know, the new girlfriend who upsets the apple cart about gets jealous of the ex-wife and, you know, creates problems with things. Have you had any experiences that way? So it's funny you said that one of his girlfriends actually became one of my closest, closest dear friends. So again, that, <laughs> that open door policy. Um, and again, more people in their lives to love. When, when my ex and I figured out all of our stuff and our ego was put aside and all of that stuff, I mean, there was always nonsense, but when we put it aside and we could keep that door open, it just makes things so much easier that when other people come in, now listen, I was I was remarried when he was dating and had all these girlfriends. So maybe for me, it might have been easier just that I had somebody. You know, I didn't experience. Um, I got married first, so you know. So, but always all question always, about that. Them. Yeah. So you were married first, you know, and your life was pretty traditional, in a non-traditional way, but he's dating and different girlfriends um were you on the same page a lot of women worry about my ex is exposing my young children to all these different partners or vice versa was that a concern for you could you guys sit down and talk and have boundaries around that we did we actually did have boundaries because the kids were young and for me my policy was that if someone's coming into my life unless we are dating and it's a boyfriend girlfriend situation they're not going to stay past a certain hour and you know what my ex had those boundaries as well so he introduced them but again as friends and you know we both agreed that until it's serious I mean he was engaged a few times three times so I mean they became serious but until they became serious let's keep them as friends they were young they were impressionable it just it was easier that way and we both believed in that concept so that was that, those boundaries were very clear. So fast forward to today, um, you had a successful peony design company for quite a long time, and you've done a shift. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to talk too much about it. I just want to mention it. What you do now, we're going to have to have you back again to talk. What are you doing now? So you went from becoming designer to. I became designer to now design your life. So now I'm a professional life coach. And again, the same concepts of, you know, designing your life to the, you know, the foundations to, you know, 
your values and, and where you're headed and where you're going and what that looks like. Um, same sort of concept in terms of, you know, the bigger picture, the defining moments of, you know, where you are, where you're stuck in your life. And um, yeah, so it's, it's been great. It's been an incredible, incredible journey. And I was really ready for it. And so uh, this, is, this is my transformation. And I think you're a real inspiration to all these people who are with kids and they're scared, but then just that message that life does go on and you can, in fact, design the life that you want. So if our viewers want to find you and they want to get in touch with you and they want help designing their life, where can they find you? They can find me at Paula Seligman Coaching and I'm on uh, Instagram, and Seligman, paulaseligmancoaching.com is my website. And uh, yeah, thank you girls. Thanks for, for um, having me on. And uh, wow, it went really quickly, the time. Yeah, always thank, you so quick. thank you so much. This was wonderful information. Thanks. So inspiring. One more thing. No, I'm Jennifer. Oh, I was just gonna Sorry? say one more thing is I always say divorce does not define you. So that's, that's my, my hidden message there. And um, so. Great message. Perfect. So thank you for joining us on the dish on divorce. Our guest today was Paula Seligman, but for now, say goodbye. I'm Jennifer Barkin. And I'm Leanne Townsend. See you, see next, you next time. time. Thank you. Thank you.